Hey, welcome back to another episode of Tech Talk. I am your host, Jeff Hootsell. I'm the Chief Cloud Officer with AuditMax. As you guys know, if you watched our show before, Tech Talk is a show where we chat with IT leaders and subject matter experts in the field of technology. Uh, we hear about their companies, their movements, some current events and things that they're doing today. We've always got great guests. Today is absolutely no different. Uh, we are happy to have Harry Mosley. Harry is the CIO with Zoom Video Communications. Uh, Harry, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, Jeff, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Yeah, absolutely. So Harry, you're coming to us from New York. Um, I know it's obviously been interesting times, a good good week for the folks at Zoom and in the midst of a lot of the stuff that's going on right now. And you guys have been, as far as the, the COVID-19 kind of pandemic, kind of the, the darlings and the shining star of this. Um, it's been interesting. So I'm, I'm curious just from the top, I mean, you've been with Zoom for a while now. Uh, it's obviously been a great ride before all this started, but but now since the, the pandemic's kind of taken hold and a lot of things we've seen over the past few months, talk a little bit about just what it's been like to lead this company through the explosive growth, through all the different use cases you're seeing now. What, what's that experience been like for you? Uh, it's, uh, it's just been incredibly humbling, to be honest, Jeff. Um, you know, we, uh, uh, when, we, when, when we ended last year, we were doing, uh, you know, hosting 10 million daily participants. Then in March, we saw the number rapidly rise to over 200 million. Then in April, over 300 million. And uh, we went from uh, 100 billion annualized meeting minutes to 2 trillion, which is a huge number. And, uh, you know, we're supporting you know, great organizations, enterprises around the world. We're supporting a variety of uh, countries and governments around the world and over 100,000 schools in 25 countries, plus all the other use cases from things like church services and birthday parties and uh, yoga classes and cooking classes and music classes and uh, so it's uh, quite fascinating and extraordinarily humbling to be as I characterize it at the epicenter of uh, enabling work at this point in time. Yes, yeah, I've, I've got a couple kids and I've, we've seen their music lessons and school lessons and even dance classes and things like that online. We've had uh, folks who work with us actually get married over <laughs> uh over the video conferences products over the past you know month or two, so it's it's been pretty fascinating to see. And you, know, you talk about those numbers, you know, 10, 20 million jump up to 300 million. It's it's really easy to kind of gloss past that. That's a for a, for a cloud-based company. That's a pretty dramatic <laughs> shift. You start talking about the you know the platform and everything else it takes to to really enable that kind of massive growth. What what has that been like from a behind the curtain standpoint to have the platform able to yeah. really scale well, like think... that and not really skip a beat? Yeah. Yeah, well, I think it sort of brings the credibility uh, of the architecture that is so unique about Zoom. Mm -hmm. And uh, we always, you know, be maintaining, you know, a, a nice big, uh, uh, you know, headroom from a capacity perspective in all of our data centers around the world. We have 17 of them. Um, we also leverage uh, AWS and the Oracle Cloud. And we're able to leverage the different data centers in the different geographical regions. So let me explain what I mean by that. So if it's early AM Eastern Standard Time, or Eastern Daylight Time rather, and um, our New York data center is uh, needs additional capacity, it can borrow from the Denver data center or it can borrow from Santa Clara. And as it gets later in the day, when Santa Clara gets busy, the New York data center starts to acquiesce. And so you can take capacity from the New York data center over to Santa Clara. And that's a um, that's a part of our what we call our horizontal uh, technology uh, in order to scale. And then we can also, as I said before, leverage our cloud, leverage the cloud providers that um, we have partnerships with. And so between these different elements, we are able to uh, handle the capacity and we're constantly upgrading all the time. Uh, great hardware vendors and great network providers, etc. So, um, it, uh, and also an amazing team. I mean, at Zoom, it's there's only one mission, there's only one objective, and uh, everybody is aligned against that. Yeah, and you guys operate a pretty distributed um, employee base as well, right? You have folks spread all across the globe that you're working with. You guys use your own product, <laughs> obviously, quite a bit. We, we drink our own champagne, absolutely. Or as some people yeah. say, I prefer drink our own champagne to eat your own dog food. But uh, <laughs> I do. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's, Harry, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. I said this is a, this is a pretty com pretty competitive space. I mean, you guys have 
you obviously, you've, you know, Zoom's now a verb. You know, you talk about now it's like Google or Xerox or Kleenex or anything else. You know, but, but you're not the only ones in this marketplace. It's a very competitive marketplace with companies like, you know, uh, Microsoft Teams and WebEx Teams and 8x8 and other providers in there. What, what is it about your product, your platform that's really allowed you guys to kind of take hold and, and kind of move to the front of that, that race right now? What, what's the difference there, you think? Yeah, so when Eric uh, Yuan, our CEO and founder, who is brilliant, by the way, when he, when he founded uh, the company, he based it on uh, several principles. He wanted easy, ease of use. He wanted functionality that was um, innovative. He wanted reliability. He wanted it to be cost effective and he wanted it to be secure. And we excel in all of those dimensions. And with, from a security perspective, we are going to be actually raising that bar even higher. I'm sure you've uh, uh, seen the paper we published on May the 22nd about a new end-to-end -end encrypted service. Um, so we've been gathering public feedback on that paper. And we will be uh, <coughs> issuing our uh, realization plan uh, somewhere in the next 10 days or so. And um, that's going to be a... Um, a big, another big differentiator. So it's the ease of use, it's the innovation functionality, it's the uh, co cost effectiveness of the platform, etc. So it's all those use cases. Everybody, you know, it's like when everybody refers to Zoom, what do they say? They say it just works. Right. I mean, there's no friction, there's no hesitation, the quality is amazing. Um, and so that's, uh, that's a big differentiator for us. And I guess that's the tough balance really is the is the user experience and that really ease of use with that the security and privacy aspects of it. Um, and I know you guys have made a lot of strides uh, in the last couple months here of really kind of stepping up there. You mentioned the new release that's coming out, that 5.0 release and, and kind of what's along with that. And, and just education as well. I'm sure when you have that kind of uplift from 10, 20 million users to 300, just knowing best practices that folks should have when starting meetings and how they publish those links and, and security codes yeah. and things like that. We did a lot of work in that area in the education. We published a lot of blogs about how to start meetings, how to host meetings, how to host a webinar, how to do classes, et cetera. We also uh, made, you know, as you just referenced, made a number of changes over the last 60 plus days and uh, as part of the sprint that we've been on. And um, uh, the, uh, you know, we've been able to sort of change the default, if you will, like for example, we put the security controls right into the application, right at the fingertips of the host or the co-host. Uh, we've changed the default settings uh, so that uh, waiting rooms are enacted and uh, uh, complex passwords are enabled and things of that nature. Because when we designed Zoom, we designed it mainly for the enterprise, which have great IT organizations that set up the defaults, uh, train their professionals, set up the standards, et cetera. But when you get into all these different use cases where, you know, sort of every consumer is their own IT organization, they don't know about these standards and they don't know about setting up these defaults. And, uh, and so now we've um, adopted our posture and things are dramatically better. Yeah. So Harry, as you're looking at now, kind of we're starting to, to loosen some of the restrictions on the, the quarantines and things like that from the, related to the pandemic and hopefully, you know, kind of getting back to, you know, a semblance of normal here. What do you see as kind of that future of work now? Is it going to go back to just how it was? People go back to the office and, and everything kind of was a standards quo was, you know, six months ago or a year ago. Do you see things really fundamentally changing based on what we've seen the past three or four months? Well, I, I personally see things fundamentally changing. And, to, you know, given the people I've, I talk to, uh, they also see things fundamentally changing. So the life we experience up until sort of call it, um, mid to late, I guess, probably late January, early February, that, that, that is not going to come back anytime soon. And um, uh, as things do uh, open up and uh, the, so the economy starts to get rolling again, um, uh, people will start to go back to the offices. But what I've heard is the following. So you have employees, Jeff, and you've got employers on the employees side. Uh, employees are actually very, in many, many cases, employees are actually really happy at working at home. Uh, they'd be much happier if their kids were in school and didn't have to do the education as, <laughs> still as, as well as work. But, you know, it's, um, they've been very productive. Um, and employers have seen that their employees are both happier, more productive, um, 
uh, at home. And the other, and the flip side for the employer is that, you know, uh, what have we been doing in our commercial offices for the last five or 10 years? We've been creating these beautiful, collaborative, open environments, um, the exact opposite of social distancing. And now these commercial offices are going to have to change their uh, setup to allow for uh, uh, social distancing. They're going to be putting up perspex panels and they're going to be putting up separations and creating one-way corridors. And this is how you get onto the floor and this is how you get off the floor. They're creating sort of rotations so that everybody's mm -hmm. walking in the same direction, not walking towards each other. And so the, the, the office environment is going to become very sanitary in addition to the fact that they, uh, the capacity in the office is going to be somewhere many companies have said one third some companies are saying they're going to go to 50 percent um i was talking to somebody yesterday uh, about a two meter rule um and so it's uh, the, so we're not going to go back to the way it was and also layer on top of that you know in big cities like in new york or san francisco in chicago people aren't going to be very happy jumping onto the metro, onto the subway, onto the bus, onto the train to commute to work. Um, and so getting people to the office and then in the elevator, there's only like, you know, instead of having 14 people, there'll be four because they're only standing in the four corners. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of challenges in the office environment and the fact that employees are work happy working at home. So I think we're going to see this sort of hybrid model where you're going to have some people in the office and you're going to have a lot of people at home, um, which will present a different problem. And that new problem will be, you know, collaboration when everybody's in the office it works really well. Collaboration when everybody is working from home works very well. The problem is that when you have some of your resources in the office and some on a remote basis, how do you get that collaboration working uh, both virtually and in the office uh, um, and then across the divide. And I believe we'll see some uh, great technology that will enable that collaboration. Yeah, I think hopefully, like I said, you're just breaking down some barriers and things that people have had for a long time. You know, I know I've been in this space for a while and just that fear of a lot of people of just flipping that camera on or opening that, <laughs> that lens on their PC to kind of let folks in. You know, it seems to start to be going down now. I think that's maybe the gateway to this. Um, but Harry, talk about really what's what's next for Zoom now. Now that you've kind of got this this massive uplift and all these folks that are familiar with your product and your service, where, where do you guys kind of go from here? What's the next step for the company? Yeah, so um, well, you know, we're still in our in our um, ninety day sprint from a security and privacy perspective. We'll get back to innovating um, in July and get back to our you know, our, our, uh, you know, what are we all about? We're all about meetings, making meetings efficient, making meetings effective, making meetings productive. You know, clearly, we've eliminated the meeting tax. Meetings start on time, meetings end on time. And, you know, we announced at Zoomtopia, as an example, um, the ability to do note taking in meetings so that when you actually leave the meeting, you leave the meeting with the notes and the uh, agreements and the plans and the discussions, etc. So no one actually has to quote make the meeting notes uh, afterwards. It's all done, and so you leave with your quote minutes of the meeting. Um, so we'll get back uh, get back to doing things of that nature, and uh, you know in continuing to enhance our Zoom phone product and our chat platform, and uh, and, and seeking uh, input from our customers and our clients on uh, features that would, again, help them be more productive in this new uh, work from home virtual model. Well, Harry, certainly kudos to you and your team. I know you had, have had a fantastic career with, uh, you know, companies like KPMG and, and, uh, and Blackstone kind of before this, and now you've kind of taken it to another level with the success you guys have had at Zoom. So, so kudos to you, and I know you have a great team of folks behind you on the Zoom staff. I'm sure you'd, uh, you know, including that that sentiment as well. But thank you guys for all you're doing and the, the products you put out there for us. And we're looking forward to, to seeing what comes next from you guys. But and I appreciate you really joining us today. Thanks so much for your insights. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. And uh, I hope you, your family, your friends, and all your colleagues, and everybody stays healthy as we work our way out of the pandemic and get through the re-entry. Uh, same, and thank same you to you as well. Day. Same to you. Thank you. Take care. Yeah.
And thank you guys Definitely. for joining us as well for another episode of uh, Tech Talk. We'll see you soon.